to allow rustlers free run of the range, you might as well quit ranching. Maybe you'd better just sign over your ranches to the rustlers. This here town of Salina has gone white-livered. More like a sheep town every day. There ain't a ranch in this county that the rustlers haven't hit. Some of us have hit. And how many of the rustlers been caught? Well, I'll tell you, just two. And what happened to the first one? He laid in jail for a week, eating at the county's expense. And then some smart lawyer come along and got him out. Now we got another cow thief in jail, waiting for a lawyer to get him out. He's telling the truth. You bet he is. You bet I'm right. Bob Wilson was caught red-handed. And he ain't got no excuse. But some lawyer will find one for him, and he'll walk out of jail just like that. Just laughing in your faces. How come you stirring up all this trouble for Wilson? How come? Why, he's a lawbreaker. And I ain't got no use for such. Seems and to me you're his partner. Say, what do you mean by that? How do we know you were in on that deal? Why do you just... ever since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. And where I come from, they ain't no rustlers. And for why? We use the rope. Well, if the rest of you are scared, I'll handle the rope myself. Rope's a lot cheaper than paying juries, and a lot surer. Spud's right. He's got it all figured out. We've stood enough of this rustling. Give him the rope cure. Well, how about it, men? Count me in. Yes. Just when is this party coming up? It won't be long. What's on your mind, Slim? Spud Hayes. He may be the answer to your prayer. I heard what he's been saying. But this town is too lily-livered to pull off a lynching party. You're wrong, Fleming. Spud's getting the boys all riled up. Oh, yeah? But I think he'll be needing our help. You'd better bring him in here. You bet. Now, as responsible citizens of the town of Salina, there's nothing we can do but support a progressive movement like this. Well, I'm for anything that's for the good of the community. No, I was just thinking. Well, don't strain yourself, Hank. What I can't figure out is why Spud is so doggone anxious to string up his old buddy. When buddies fall out, they're the worst kind of enemies. Yeah, but I never knew they had a falling out. Things were mighty peaceful over on the crossbar X when Wilson was running it and Spud was cooked. Well, with a slow-working brain like Spud's, I'm sure they didn't fall out of a Mary Scott. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Fleming. Hello, Spud. You want to see me? Yes, I did. Now, we're law-abiding citizens, and lynching is against the law. Ordinarily, I'd be the first one to stand by Sheriff Judson. But in this case, I must admit, I think you're right. Well, I'm sure I'm right, Mr. Fleming. I didn't jump to any conclusions either, because me and Bob were partners. But if I stood by him now, and what would people think that I knew about the rusting all along, and maybe in on it? Personally, I think you were. Where you been? <laughs> Hold that. Cool down now, bud. Don't lose your head, son. I was only joking. Oh, well, then, I'm sorry I acted the way I did, Mr. Fleming, but that's kind of a sore spot with me. Now, the boys here will help you. And if there's any fuss raised afterwards, you can count on me. Thanks. Hi, Sheriff. Hello, Spud. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing. I thought I'd better call on Bob Wilson. Not that I want to, especially. It's only that him and me used to be buddies. I know how you feel. Trying to feel sorry for Wilson myself. Sure to do a long stretch. All right, go ahead. The door's open. Thanks, Sheriff. Wait a minute. You wouldn't be slipping anything to the prisoners, bud. You know me better than that, Sheriff. Just sort of complying with the law. I'll give this back to you when you come out. Sure, sure.
Fudge, I'm glad to see you. So they finally caught up with you. Well, I never thought you'd turn out this way. Well, just for old time's sake, I'll help you all I can. That is, legally. But that don't mean we'll be buddies again when you come out of prison. The sheriff might have big ears. But what about Meryl? Well, she don't know what to believe. Anyway, she's getting ready to leave the country. Well, don't tell me that Fleming... It wasn't Fleming so much. You know how Mary's always had a hankering to go on the stage. Yeah, I know. And there ain't much you can do to Mary Scott once she makes up her mind on something. And she just plumb set on selling that ranch. I tell you, I was framed. Well, if you was framed, who done it? When I was free, I kept her from selling. Can't you do anything, Spud? Well, I tried to persuade her. Told her she ought to hold on to the crossbar, eh? And she just laughed at me. Yeah, she's as stubborn as a mule. If I could only get out of here, I could stop her. You gotta get me out of here. There's a bunch going to take you out tonight. Well, that's sure nice of them. Nice? Man, what are you talking about? I didn't know I had so many friends. Friends? Why, man, they're gonna lynch you. Lynch me? Sure. What else? It don't hurt much. All they do is tie a rope around your neck, drive a shot from Monday, and something goes, <laughs> and there you are. It's all over in a few seconds. Well, I guess that settles that. Yep, and you too. Bud, you got to do something for me. I already did. I arranged the lynching. You arranged? Sure. You wanted to get out, and Fleming helped me. Fleming helped you? Yes, of course he's not coming out himself. He's just donating Hank Taylor and Slim Jenkins and Buck Mason. What are you driving at, Spud? Well, I don't know whether it'll work or not. But if it doesn't, you won't have to worry long. I tie your hands sort of loose-like, so you can slip them up when you're under the tree. You see, I'm the leader. Hey, you're smarter than I thought you were. Spud, they'll all be armed. So will you. There's two guns under the saddle flat. And don't forget, they got hair triggers. Ooh, Rocky. Everything is just about ready. We've been waiting for you. Where have you been? Well, I've been out stirring up some of the people. Yeah? Then what are you doing over in the jail? The jail? Yes, the jail. Why, uh, I... That's uh... just what I thought. Now, I'll stick right here so the sheriff won't know I have anything to do with it. You're right, Mr. Fleming. I want you and Hank to start the works. Make a big show of it. And when you see the sheriff coming down the street, duck. I'll say we will. And I want some men in back of the jail. Ready to start as soon as the sheriff comes this way. Right. Now remember, if Bob Wilson is alive tomorrow, he'll tell the sheriff the name of every man in this mob. Now get going. Boy, that's well. Come on, fellas. We'll take him out and string him up. Hey, Spud. You're not going. What do you mean I'm not going? I'm the leader and I started this. And I'm finishing it. Sit down. No, I want to go on out there. Sit down. about time. I guess so.
taken up the whole west end of town. Who? I don't know. There must be a dozen of them. Sounds like an army. Come on. Oh, I ain't no officer. Like fun you ain't. I deputize you. Uh, not me, oh no. Well, maybe you'd rather go to jail for resisting an officer. Well, uh, all right, I'll go. I'm about out of ammunition. Yeah, me too. We better get moving before the sheriff turns up. Two different calibers. Been fired in the last few minutes, too. Don't look like they've done any damage, though. Nah. Let's go in the saloon and see what we can find out. Suits me. Let's get him out of here. Get it over here. for yourself, Wilson? Why, uh, yes, a uh, few words. Let's have them. Well, uh, I don't especially like to have this happen to me. I reckon you fellas wouldn't either. Come on. Quit stalling. Let's get it over with. Yeah. Well, what I wanted to say was that, uh, as long as I have to go, I want to tell you the names of a few others mixed up in that wrestling deal with me. As a matter of fact, I saw a couple of them right here in this crowd. Show us who he is. Yeah, we'll fix him. Well, there's one of them right over there, that black hat on. Get over there. I'll keep my on you. Sorry, I had to do that, Red. Don't anybody move. You'll never get away with this, Wilson. Oh, we'll see about that. figure why you wouldn't let me go along with them. Well, knowing that you were a former pal of Wilson's, I just figured it wouldn't be good for you to witness a thing like that. 
But you don't know how I feel about it. How? How? Well, how about my reputation here about it? with a rustler like that might practically ruin me. I heard enough of your talk. Go on, get out of here. Thanks. I can't figure out how we'll slip. Well, it's impossible to follow a trip. You know, I've really been anxious to sell all along. If it hadn't been for my foreman being so insistent that... Hard to stop you. How about if he had any personal designs on you or your ranch? I doubt if he'll have a chance to do anything about it after tonight. You mean he's being tried tonight? No, but the rumors around Selena of a lynching plea. Oh, they couldn't do a thing like that. Why, I'd... I wouldn't worry. There aren't a half a dozen men in town with nerve enough to do that sort of thing. Now, if you will just sign your name on this line. Well, here you are, Mary. And here's your deed, Mr. Fleming. Thank you. Oh, I knew you'd do that, Mary. There, Fleming. How did you get out of jail? Oh, I wanted to thank you for that. Without your help, I never could have made it. Better take his gun, Spud, before he hurt somebody. While I talk business to this brainy young lady. I think you've interfered enough in my plans. Well, it strikes me I didn't interfere enough. You leave here at once. I'm not leaving this house. Yeah, and he wants to do the talking. Wilson, I own the cross bikes now. I aim to shoot the first rustler to set foot on my property. You won't own it until that deed's recorded, Fleming. Mary, you can cash this check the first thing in the morning. Good luck to you. Thank you. And unless you want the next necktie party to be thorough, you better leave this country pretty quick. Thanks. Sit down. I won't. I said sit down. I don't know why I should be concerned. Trying to protect the interests of a girl who hasn't enough good sense to listen. I did listen. All the time you were acting as my foreman and rustling my cattle. I'll let that remark pass because you're a girl. When do you give him possession? Not that it's any of your business, Mr. Wilson. But I'm leaving for the East tomorrow. Too bad there's a law against kidnapping. But there is a law. Just as there's a law against stealing cattle. I just want you to understand one thing, Mary. I'm going to find out what's on this ranch that Fleming wants. And when I do find out, I'm going to see if there isn't some law that protects mental incompetence. If you're through talking, Mr. Wilson, I'll ask you to excuse me. She ought to be spanked. Yeah, and maybe you think I wouldn't enjoy doing just that. Unless I miss my guess, Fleming will ride all night over to the county seat to get that deed recorded. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? I'd give that horse of mine if I could see Fleming when he walks into the recorder's office and discovers he hasn't even got the deed to the crossbar X. Well, what do you mean? You saw him put it in his pocket. The hand is quicker than the eye, my friend. When did you get that? Well, I had a little trouble getting the gun out of his shoulder holster. Spud, I don't know what I'd do without you. Well, it won't do us any good. She'll just give him another deed if he asks her for it. Oh, no, she won't. Don't forget, she's leaving for the East the first thing tomorrow morning. understand you better. I bought the Cross Barx Ranch last night and gave a check on the Selena Bank to Mary Scott. Well, there ain't no law again that. The check's any good. You'll have to say the first part of that over. 
These barbed wire telephone fence lines ain't so good for hearing. I said don't let that Scott girl get out of town with my money till she gives me a new deed. You say stop her. <laughs> she double shoveled you. Well, if she did beat Mark Fleming out of Adobe Dollar, she's the first person in Salina whatever did. I want her taken off right now. No, sir. I ain't gonna have that girl taken off of that stagecoach unless you swear out a warrant. What's that? Well, if you do, I'll have to. <laughs> Might your name be Mary Scott? Yes, it is. I sure hate to arrest a pretty girl like you. Arrest me? Are you joking? I wouldn't joke with a lady, madam. There's a fellow named Fleming down at Selena that claims you skipped out with some money that belongs to him. But I sold him my ranch. He gave me a check and I cashed it. Anything wrong about that? No, but he claims you swiped the deed back off of him. I'm sorry, miss, but you'll have to come back to Selena and explain it. This is ridiculous. I'm not going back to Selena, not for you or anybody else. This is an outrage. I won't stand for it. You know very well that knowing me, I never broke a law in my whole life. I believe you, Miss Mary, but... Uh, well, then why am I arrested? What are you holding me for? I told Fleming I wouldn't put you under arrest without a warrant. He went to the officers in Clifton. They was the ones that had you taken off of the stagecoach and brought you back here. Well, if Fleming lost the deed, that's not my fault. If he'd been a gentleman and let me know about it, I'd have sent him a new one. Sure. Now all you have to do is make a new deed, then you can go. I won't do it. He can have his money back and I'll keep my ranch. Now, Mary. I have just enough of Bill Scott's blood in me to show Fleming where to get off. And you too, Mr. Judson. You sure have, ma'am. I wouldn't want you for a prisoner. Oh, you wouldn't. Well, you can lock me up and throw the key away. Here, go ahead. Lock me up. See if it does you any good. Maybe I won't have to put you in a cell. You can sit here in my office and be comfortable till Fleming gets back to town. Find anything, Spud? No, not a thing. Neither did I. There's not a sign of oil or gold on this ranch unless the gold's in somebody's back teeth. Oh, that's funny colored sand, isn't it? Yeah. Say, I wonder if we could stay up at the ranch house tonight. Not unless you want to get murdered by some of Fleming's outfit. Hey, don't talk like that, man. It's bad enough getting murdered without being told about it. We might be able to stop at the line cabin, though. There's plenty of grub over there, and it isn't far from here. Riders! Where? Just went through that draw. Looks like we might have company at the line cabin. Yeah, that means we're going to have to sleep out in the open again. Just means we're going to find out who they are. I'm happy to say we've had a very successful day. I'll say. There's no doubt that the crossbar X is very valuable. The stuff runs pretty rich, and there's a big market for it. That's just what Fleming figured. I wonder what's the landing. He said he'd meet us here before sundown. You don't think he could have run into Wilson? Oh, no. I'll bet my bottom dollar Wilson's crossing the border into Mexico by now. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody peeking in that window. Maybe it was Mr. Fleming. Shut up and be quiet. Now you stay here. We'll go out the back door and come around both sides of the cabin. Come on, Hank. They went out the back door. We'll go in the front and pump that stranger.
What can I do for you? Now, look here, stranger. We only got a minute. We want to know what the stuff is on the crossbar axe that you and Fleming are dealing on. You friends of Fleming? Friends? Say, if it wasn't for us... Well, you see, it's this way. Uh, what he means to say is, uh, we want to know what you're buying, and we want to know pronto. Well, now, the exact chemical formula is this. Hydrocyanic subsulfite trinitrobenzol mixed with sulfuric tetracarbon phenol. You see? What did I tell you? So what is that in plain United States? My friend here don't savvy French lingo. Oh, yes, I do. You mean to say you got all of that? Yeah, that stuff's just so many words. Now, you're smart, all right, but that's not gonna... Don't move, either of you. I'll drop those guns. Go around and keep your eye on them. Get back there, all of you. Especially you. Now listen, you. You can make things a lot easier on yourself if you'll come clean and tell me what you're trying to buy from Fleming. Well, I'll tell you. You see, it happened this way. Oh, quit stalling. I know you're not interested in horses or cattle, and you're not interested in sheep. Now, I've searched over practically every foot of this property, and I know there's no gold or anything like that. Now, suppose you tell me the truth, because if you don't... Hello, Wilson. All right, boys, pick up your guns. Feeling? Come over here. Get on your horses. Now, get me Wilson's gun. Go on. Get it. Now, this property belongs to Mr. Fleming. And as long as I'm his foreman, you and your half-wit friend here will keep all of it. If I ever catch either one of you on this property again, you'll wind up so full of lead you won't be able to leave it. I'm sorry I let him do this to us, Bob. But you're such a good talker, when you started in on that city man, I plumb forgot my business. Oh, that's all right, Spud. It just means we got to get the information some other way. I got an idea. What is it? Here's your dinner, Mary. I'm not hungry. It's good. I've heard about the kind of food they serve in jail. Why, this ain't jail food. My wife cooked this especially for you. Beef stew, kidney pie, nice fresh apple jelly. She opened that for you, too. No, thanks. Nice hot coffee. I won't eat a bite as long as I'm in this cell. But I didn't put you in this cell. You came in here yourself. It doesn't make any difference. I'm under arrest, am I not? Well, technically, yes. I'd say you were just sort of half arrested. Here, taste this. Mr. Judge and I said I wasn't hungry. I could eat this food three times a day.
depart. Oh, Sheriff. Sheriff! Why, well, that's Fleming now. Fleming, what's the meaning of all this? Oh, Mary, uh, something happened to the deed you gave me last night. I just wanted to make sure you'd uh, sign a new one. So you had me taken off the stage and brought back here to jail, just like the lowest criminal. Now, Miss Scott. I don't know what happened to that deed after I gave it to you, and what's more, I don't care. No, I wouldn't feel that way, Miss Scott. I just thought it would save both of us a lot of time if we straightened the matter out before you left. Now, if you'll just sign a new deed to the cross bar X... I'm not going to do it. I'm keeping the ranch. You can't do that. I bought the place, and the sale is a sale. Just because the sheriff bungled up matters, you don't have to blame me. I won't do it. Not for you or anybody else. Very well, Miss Scott. I have a warrant in my pocket charging you with swindling. And, Sheriff, that means she stays here till she changes her mind. I just wish it was you I had in jail instead of Mary. You heard what I said. You can keep me in jail from now till doomsday for all I care. I can't find anything. There ought to be something in this house to give us a lead as to why Fleming's anxious to buy Mary's ranch. Whatever it is, he doesn't seem to have gotten any letters about it. I'm going in and have a talk with Fleming. Maybe I can bluff him out. Now listen, you sneak outside and stand watch. Let me know if any of Fleming's men show up. I'm reaching for that gun, Fleming. This is just a friendly visit. Sit down. Keep your hands on the table. Coming into a man's house this way is housebreaking. <laughs> well, I'm already wanted for jailbreaking. This won't make much difference. Maybe a smoke could make you feel more sociable. Now I'll take that gun. Oh, I'll get it. Whoa, a nice new one. Feels good. Kind of nippy out. Now, what's on your mind, Wilson? Well, I have something you want. And you know something I'm trying to find out. I'm not at all interested in anything you have. There's something valuable on the crossbar X. Not at all. I just took a fancy to the place, so I bought it. Bought it? But you haven't got a deed. But I do have Mary Scott in jail. And that's where she'll stay until she gives me another one. In jail? Yes. <laughs> well, it's evident that you don't know Mary like I know her. What are you talking about? Why, if you've got Mary Scott in jail, she'll never give you another deed. And since I had the one she gave you the other night, well, it looks like you're just out of luck. 
So you're a thief, too. <laughs> That's what you called me when you had me arrested for cattle stealing. Now, look here, Fleming. Let you and I get together. Let me in on this secret. You mean that? Sure. And you won't double-cross me? All right, let me have the deed. Oh, no. Not till we have an understanding. The place. Yeah, we'd better gag him, too. Maybe the wrong fellow's getting tied up. All right, Mr. Wilson. Now get over there. What do you want to do with them, Fleming? Here, tie his hands behind him. Come on, get over here. Oh, get me. Come on, see if he has that beat. Slim, search him too. He ain't got it. Ah, uh, he hasn't got it. Now tell me, where did you hide it? I'll give you three guesses, and they'll all be wrong. There's other ways of making a man talk. Throw a log on that fire. Slim, you go outside and stand watch. I kind of hate to miss the fun. Get over there and sit down. I made you an offer, Fleming. I thought you'd talk. Well, I guess I might as well talk. We haven't got any chance of getting away. Now that's what I call using good sense. A deed's hidden where no one but I can find it. You just tell us where it is. Buck will locate it. Yeah, but even if I tell you where it is, what assurance have I that you'll turn us loose? You have my word. <laughs> you'll have to offer something better than that, Fleming. One of you can go with Buck. The other stays here till he gets back. Well, I don't know about that. What do you say, Spud? I'll stay. Well, I guess I better stay. I might bump into that sheriff. Well, you could bring him out here, couldn't you? Not while I'm wanted for wrestling. Well, make up your minds. Look out, that fire's full of gun shells. Get out! What are we going to do now? Get out of the way, Spud. There's another one in there. Say, the place is on fire. Look like footprints. 
Yeah, I see. First time I've ever seen them blown out of fireplaces. Must be Santa Claus. Whatever that is burning, it's tracked in here on our boots. Ouch! I'm on fire here. <laughs> yeah. The color of that blaze, that's high-grade potash. Don't hand me that. The shottish is a dance. I didn't say shottish. I said potash. That's something worth a lot of money. It's used for everything from fertilizer to making high-grade explosives. But I've been walking through that stuff on the crossbar X all the time and didn't realize it. What do you mean, that dirty-looking stuff? They're coming back. And they'll break down the door. There's a knife on that table. Come here, quick, Spud. Turn around there. Go ahead, cut you. Fleming go. I said, where's Fleming? Well, maybe I can find a way to make you talk. I found out why Fleming's after the crossbar X. There's an unlimited supply of potash on it that can be taken out with a steam shovel. That, however, is a matter to be taken up with Fleming. Right now, there are other things that concern you three. Now, besides you fellas being in on Fleming's scheme to swindle Miss Scott, all three of you face charges of jail delivery for taking me out. Then there are charges of attempted murder for trying to lynch me. Charges of inciting a riot, disorderly conduct, conspiracy to commit a felony, and a half a dozen other things of less importance. Now, let's get it over with, Wilson. What's on your mind? Well, you can get a lighter sentence if you use good judgment. I'm interested in finding out just how I can prove that Fleming framed me on that cattle rustling charge. Now, uh, we might be able to forget a few things if you just put those details down in black and white over your signature. You mean you'll forget all about our part in it? Shut up! That's Fleming. Not a move out of you, fellas. The front door was open, so I walked right in. Gentlemen, I've been in touch with my firm. They want the ranch, but the matter of rightful ownership must be cleared up before I can close a deal. I'm ready to sign the contract tonight. If Fleming can prove that the land is his and not Miss Scott's. Gentlemen, have you lost your speech or is this some quaint joke? Well, if it is a joke, it's on them and Fleming. Mary Scott still owns this ranch, and if you want to buy that potash, you'll have to talk business with me. I represent her. She has the deed? I have, but it's recorded in her name. Then I can only transact business with her. How about it now? It's the same as it was, till so Fleming says otherwise. If you know where Fleming is, I can get this thing straightened up right away. I don't know where he is now, but I advise you to get this straightened out by tomorrow morning. You can depend on me, stranger. Bud, pick up those guns. I better take them along, Spud, just in case. Well, Bob, you can't go to jail. No, but you can. Who, me? Sure. And so I came by to let you know I've seen the sheriff and have withdrawn my complaint. What makes you so big-hearted all of a sudden, Mr. Fleming? It's not a case of being big-hearted, Mary. I made a mistake, and I'm merely interested in having it straightened out. You certainly did make a mistake. And a bad one. 
Yes. But I finally realized that I don't want your ranch. You don't want the ranch? No. And I'm sorry I caused you so much trouble over the deed. I had a new deed drawn up for you to sign. You might as well take it. It's no good to me now. Well, why don't you want the ranch? What's the matter with it? Oh, nothing. Only I have a right to change my mind, haven't I? Well, that's no way to do business. First you want the place, and then you don't want it. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mary. But that's the way I feel about it. Well, one would think to hear you talk that the ranch wasn't worth having. Well, is it? Yes. Well, if it's such a desirable ranch, why don't you hold on to it? You know I want to go east and follow my career. And how can I with a ranch on my hands? this in the first place if you hadn't been so unreasonable and and so ungentlemanly. Go in and see how merry is. But mind you, Spud, don't let her know I sent you. County seat and record this deed, the better. Now, Buck, I want you to take good care of him. A pleasure. You bet. Go watch it. Where's Fleming? Where are you going, Helen? think you're leaving? Well, Mr. Fleming canceled the complaint. He didn't say anything to me about it. I'm sorry, Murray, but until he does, you'll have to stay right here. I think you're horrible.
Fleming, you're going back to jail. And you better start thinking fast, because you've got a lot of explaining to do to the sheriff. Before I found out there are valuable potash deposits on the Scott Ranch. Why, Fleming was practically stealing the property. What she needs is a guardian. There you are. Does that satisfy you? Where's Mary? Here are your deeds, Mary. You seem to have been giving them away in wholesale lots. Here. When you go east, you better lock them in a safe deposit box. Who's going east? Well, it's either go east or stay here and get married and run that ranch. Why, Bob, is that a proposal? Well, after they had me arrested for stealing your cattle, I didn't think you'd want me to propose. Of course I want you to. Mary, why didn't you say that in the first place? 